Some recent financial data has caused a certain amount of excitement over the current state of China's economy. And it's not just in China where people have been taking notes. Those in the U.S. could also be eyeing China's growth nervously, as BUN's Sylvia Gunawan now explains. Move over, Japan. Here comes China. The most populous country in the world is on course to overtake Japan this year as the world's second largest economy. According to preliminary figures, China's GDP in 2009 reached $4.9 trillion, up nearly 9% year-on-year. Even though Japan's GDP figure won't be released until next month, the outlook for China seems promising. The Japanese yen appreciated 10%. The, the real GDP could be bigger than China's 4.9 trillion dollars. So anyway, you know, China eventually will be number two uh, biggest economy in the world. And as a Chinese, I feel very proud. In spite of the global economic downturn, last week China revealed its economy, currently the world's third largest, expanded by 8.7 percent last year and 10.7 percent in the fourth quarter. China had originally been expected to overtake Japan sometime in 2011, but some predictions now forecast that could happen by the middle of this year and that China's economy could triple by 2020. In the past, exports have been a key driver to China's economic growth, but virtually all of last year's growth was driven by domestic demand, and that's the result of China's $585 billion stimulus package that was to be spread over a period of two years, including this year. But the bigger question remains, can China sustain that kind of growth in the long run? Uh, personally, I think uh, over the next five years, the economy uh, should be no problem. Okay, I, I think it's, if it's not a 10 percent, maybe like a six, a seven or eight percent. But Professor Feng and others are also worried about other issues such as inflation and a real estate bubble, not to mention excessive bank lending and loan defaults. Analysts say an interest rate hike is expected as early as the second quarter to prevent the economy from overheating. And some argue China won't raise interest rates before the U.S. does, so as not to attract a further influx of so-called hot money or money that flows into a country to take advantage of a favorable interest rate. Last week, China Central Bank again raised the interest rate on its three-month bills. It also raised the capital reserve requirements for banks to limit the amount of money they can lend. Analysts say this form of monetary tightening is to be expected in the first half of this year in an effort to prevent the economy from growing too quickly. But taking the title of the second largest economy in the world has been no easy task for China. The country has seen remarkable growth over the past 30 years, though Professor Feng says it still has a long way to go. China is still a developing country. We still have like 150 to like 200 million people who live under like one dollar one day, which is the standard given by the U.S. as a poverty line. Okay, so don't don't believe that China is a rich country, <laughs> because we have like 1.3 billion people, you know, and such a lot of people to support. Feng says that China's economy, while impressive, is still no threat to the U.S., arguing that a developing country can't even be compared to a developed one. But global audit firm PricewaterhouseCoopers predicted in a recent report that China would overtake the U.S. as the world's largest economy as early as 2020 and could have a sizable lead 10 years after that with nearly 20 percent of the world's GDP. So for now, at least, the U.S. remains in pole position. But having steered successfully around the world's recent economic speed bumps, Beijing's potential for growth further down the road could have Washington checking its rearview mirror more anxiously than ever. Sylvia Gunawan, BON. Well, Sylvia did mention the PwC prediction of 2020 as being the date for China's economy to overtake that of the United States. Other people not quite so optimistic, saying perhaps in the late 2020s, 2030. Still a long way off and an unknown at the moment. Yes. Well, stay with us. Continuing now on BON News with Straight from the Street, up next.